Not like this, we did. Not like this, we did. Greetings, curious humans, and welcome to Curiosity Feeds the Cat. My name is Professor Criticat, and today we're diving into a viral topic, literally. During the last coronavirus pandemic, a popular Nigerian pastor, Chris Oyakalomi, claimed that there are no viruses in nature and that all viruses were created in a lab. Oh, I hate to burst his bubble, but this is fundamentally incorrect. Viruses are ubiquitous. But seriously, let's set the record straight. This rather silly claim is a bit like saying there are no bacteria in nature and they were all created in a lab. Our planet is a planet of viruses. Viruses are so common. You could say they're as natural as, well, nature itself. Eat, take the oceans, for example. Did you know that a single liter of seawater contains up to 10 billion viruses? There are more viruses in our oceans than there are stars in the Milky Way. And these viruses aren't just hanging out. They're busy infecting bacteria, marine animals, and even other viruses. Yes, you heard that right. There are viruses that infect viruses. It's like a microscopic version of a soap opera down there. Viruses that can only infect bacteria have been found in the deepest parts of the ocean. Cyphovirus, a family of bacteria infecting viruses, was recently discovered in the Mariana Trench. Known as phages, bacteria infecting viruses are found in every ecosystem on Earth, unless, of course, our pastor thinks humans are creating bacteria-eating viruses in the lab and chucking them into the ocean. And it's not just the oceans. Viruses are floating around in the air we breathe, in the soil under our feet, and even in the food we eat. They're infecting everything from fungi and plants to animals and, you guessed it, humans. Fortunately, less than 1% of known viruses cause disease in humans. In fact, some are unable to infect humans, and those that end up infecting humans only succeed after several attempts at what is known as a spillover event. The discovery of viruses actually goes back a few hundred years. Now, let's whisk her away to the past for a moment. The first virus ever discovered was the tobacco mosaic virus, way back in 1892 by a scientist named Dmitry Ivanovsky. He found this virus infecting tobacco plants. Not something you'd whip up in a lab unless you've got some serious time on your paws. The history of smallpox infections goes back a few thousand years to ancient Egypt, where evidence suggests Egyptian pharaoh Ramesses V may have had smallpox. The earliest written description of a disease like smallpox appeared in China in the 4th century CE, Common Era. Early written descriptions also appeared in India in the 7th century and in Asia Minor in the 10th century. But wait, it gets even stranger. Viruses have been found in some of the most extreme environments on Earth, like deep within volcanic vents. That's right, viruses are thriving in the scorching heat and toxic gases of volcanoes. These extreme viruses are specially adapted to survive in conditions that would melt most life forms, showing just how resilient and adaptable they are. They're in ancient permafrost, they're floating high in the atmosphere, and they've been around for billions of years. Yes, that's billions with a B. Long before humans even knew how to use a litter box, let alone a laboratory. And let's not forget about the viruses living inside us. Our bodies are teeming with viruses. There are viruses on our skin, in our gut, and even in our blood. In fact, our gut alone is home to an entire community of viruses called the virome that plays a crucial role in maintaining our health. Some of these viruses help regulate our immune system, while others keep harmful bacteria in check. So, viruses aren't just about making us sick. Some of them are keeping us alive. Here's something even more mind-blowing. 
Viruses are also a part of our DNA. Over millions of years, some viruses have integrated into the genomes of the organisms they infect, including humans. About 8% of the human genome is made up of viral DNA. These ancient viral remnants have even influenced our evolution, helping us adapt to new challenges over time. One of the best studied viral genes found in humans is called the syncytin-1 gene, a gene which later became crucial in the formation of the placenta. Humans and other animals are part virus, and I will be discussing this in a future episode. So, the idea that all viruses were cooked up in a lab? That's like saying every tree was made in a factory. Sure, humans have studied viruses, and some have been modified in labs, but viruses existed long before humans were even around. They've been part of the natural world for eons, and they're going to be around long after we're gone. Now, here's the kicker. When someone, especially a religious leader, makes bold claims about things they clearly don't understand, it's important to pause and think critically. Faith is powerful, but when it comes to science, facts matter. Misleading information, whether it's about health, the environment, or even tiny viruses, can have serious consequences. It has also come to my attention that this same Nigerian pastor has also made other laughable claims about vaccines. It is astonishing that a species of primate that calls itself Homo sapiens sapiens can say the most foolish things. I guess these Nigerian pastors must be in a competition to see who can get away with uttering the most mind-numbing twaddle. So, the next time you hear someone claiming that all viruses were made in a lab, remember this. Our planet is awash with viruses, and that's just nature doing its thing. And maybe don't take scientific advice from people who think viruses are as fake as their smiles on Sunday morning. See you next time. And remember that curiosity does not kill the cat. Curiosity feeds the cat.